Make time for yourself. This is another important one and it's way overlooked. It's probably one of the worst that actually leads to some of the other problems because you get fatigued, you get frustrated, you feel undervalued, etc. Making time for yourself is multi functional. Uh, sorry, multi, yeah. Is it functional or multi, multi something? Um, the first one is home life. You need to have some time for yourself. And I know um, in the UK there's things like the shed groups and stuff where, and you see it on, sometimes in TV shows where the, the husband disappears up the garden shed and has the radio, sits there reading the paper, smoking a pipe, that sort of stuff. They're just making time for themselves. And it's often they're in a battered relationship, but even they manage to go and say, I'm just going to go and fix the lawnmower and disappear for the afternoon. You need to do this, and other people need to recognize you do need your own space sometimes. One of the things I love, which I haven't spent enough time doing and I need to get back into, is fishing. Fishing is something I love doing. It's like switching off, but it also is something I can teach my son to do. It's something that passes through, you know, family I mean, I used to go as a young boy with my father. I remember the my mother's um, cheese and tomato sandwiches, soggy sandwiches in the plastic bag. You know, the little <laughs> you get there, and the the tomatoes gonna mush it, so the the bread's all soggy. And you think I was probably about six years old when I, that was going on, but I remember it. I remember the fishing. There's a lot of reasons that you do this stuff because it adds these little moments, but it comes down to making time for yourself. But like that, that's father and son time. Um, but even in work, you will see people that are directors or very senior management, which are very good at making time for themselves, um, whether it be the golf course on a Wednesday or whatever. Um, but they will, they will schedule in some appointment times where they've got gaps in their day to sit and do stuff for themselves. Because what they do, which they don't let you do often, is create time for themselves. Because they'll they'll do that, so they're always finished on time. But your schedule is often full, nine to five, plus stuff that they didn't accommodate for. Um, but if you can do it, scheduling some of that time during the week where you're sat in an office and simply getting rid of all the other tasks that need doing, but normally people bug you about. And you just turn around and say, for two hours, I'm unavailable. I'm booked in this office, whatever. I'm doing this. And, you know, I've got stuff to do. I need to tidy up all these contracts or whatever. I need that finished on off my desk. So that's what I'm doing. And the reason you do it in an office away from, say, an open office or... Um, wherever you're normally working, is it's a fixed, quiet location where people leave you alone. That's, that's an important bit, being left alone to get on with it. Because I know myself, um, in an office environment, there's always somebody asking you something. And it, it's those things that delay a lot of those things. That's why I'm quite a keen home worker, because I do way more in the, for the same money it, at home then companies will get in the work environment because their work environment is often counterproductive due to the amount of stuff going on in the office. But yeah, so you've got, you've got to, in your work life, get a balance in there. The same with doing overtime and stuff. First thing I would say is how much tax you're paying. Is it really worth doing it? The next thing is, do you really need to be doing it? Is it better to go up the golfing range on a Friday afternoon rather than um, spending time doing some overtime uh, on the Friday and then sort of rush, maybe go out for a beer on a Friday night. But the point is, you might be better off just having a bit of alone time doing something you like doing rather than overtime. There's many, many reasons that you have to make time for yourself. You, you've got it for personal development. You know, you maybe you're doing a training course or should be doing a training course or doing a hobby course and, and something you like doing. Maybe you want to do photography. But the whole point is a lot of the time we don't make time for ourselves. We make time for others. We take the kids swimming. We take the kids to football. We do, take the wife to her art class or whatever. Um, 
we, we spend all our time doing work, we do extra hours at home. Um, I know one of my uncles, uh, for example, because they're sort of understaffed, because this is one of the things in a lot of the industries in the UK, there's excessive managers and not enough administration. Um, on Saturday, he would be going through all the hire vehicles, and on Sunday, sitting there printing out all the certifications for the testing of all these vehicles. Because uh, he, he deals with cranes, diggers, and all that sort of stuff, so there's paperwork for each one. And he did that Saturday and Sunday, because Monday, Friday, he's busy in the office. He ain't got time to do that. But all this stuff has got to be ready for Monday, for when the vehicles go back on hire again. So with that, his, he should have actually just said no. Because in all honesty, it's not his problem. He doesn't own the company. The company will quite happily let you waste all your weekends for the next 20 years. And they're, they're not paying for it. And they don't appreciate it. Because if they did appreciate it, they would understand that you're doing this. It's a task that needs to be done as a legal requirement. But they should actually have somebody doing it in the office. Um, but instead, they're, they're on demand and under budget, even though it's a very profitable business. But as long as you're picking it up, they ain't going to invest in it. If anything, I, in these sort of scenarios, I treat it like they think I'm stupid. Um, this is one of the arguments I had when I was with Carillion, um, was the fact of travel time. Now, they're saying, well, travel time, you, you just got to put up with it. You know, I'm like, but I'm driving from Worcester to Edinburgh. It's a six hour drive on a Monday and a six hour on a Friday plus going with sites during the week, and you're not paying for any of this. You're only paid for 37 and a half hours a week, but even just on the work tasks, you're getting 55, plus these at least 12 hours of extra travel. You're abusing this. And they're like, oh, but you've got to be flexible. Flexible means it's a two-way street. Flexible is them actually coming out of London to actually come and see you but they don't because they want to be near where they live. So they don't come out, they're not flexible. And this is the thing, you sometimes get bullied into this stuff when I simply said, no, it's not acceptable, I'm not doing it anymore. And they adapted. They didn't like it, I'll tell you what, they did not like it, but at the same time, they should have built that into the contract. And it's not me being unflexible, it's they're being abusive. They're getting nearly twice as many work hours because even though you sat in the vehicle, they're still expecting you to go from A to B. They're not paying for that. They're expecting you to be away from home an extra half a week. A week. Um, so you've got to sit there and realize that your time is not only for making for yourself, but it's a valuable thing. It's for your mental health, it's important. For your, for your body, it's important, but also for your personal development and doing stuff that isn't work-related is important. Because if you're not getting that bit of development and space in your life, then it's not healthy. It's as simple as that. Thanks for watching.